The Biden administration is closing out 2023 in much the same way it began, with headlines about a migrant crisis on the U.S. southern border. Border Patrol agents encountering a record number of people entering the country, a caravan heading toward the border, and American cities struggling to keep up with asylum seekers. As Stephanie Sy reports, it's with that backdrop that President Biden dispatched three top advisors to Mexico in search of solutions. Secretary of State Antony Blinken arrived in Mexico City today, greeted by U.S. Ambassador Ken Salazar. Blinken, along with Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas and other top U.S. officials, met with Mexico's president on their second visit since October to address the migrant crisis. The U.S. is asking López Obrador to make it harder for migrants to move through Mexico and to do more to stop migrants when they try to enter Mexico from Guatemala. In exchange, Mexico wants the U.S. to commit more aid to the migrants' countries of origin and ease sanctions on Venezuela and Cuba. The talks come as record numbers of people try to enter the U.S. from the southern border. At times last week, Customs and Border Protection stopped more than 10,000 people a day, adding to the more than 240,000 migrants that officials encountered in November. The numbers have stretched Border Patrol to its limits, with agents struggling to process the influx as thousands gathered in Eagle Pass, Texas in recent weeks. U.S. Customs and Border Protection closed other ports of entry in Arizona and California in the last month in order to redeploy officers to help with migrant processing. <laughs> Underlining the pressure on U.S. officials, a caravan of migrants is steadily making its way to the border. An estimated 6,000 people from Central America, Venezuela, Cuba and elsewhere have been waiting for months in southern Mexico. On Christmas Eve, they began their march northwards under the beating sun. They make up the largest caravan in more than a year. Many young and exhausted families are among the masses, including Jose's. My daughter can't walk anymore. I carry her in my arms because she needs to rest. She's only three years old and she's not healthy. She's ill. Rosa journeyed from El Salvador. I demand politicians to touch their hearts because many of us are tired, without eating, and with blisters on our feet. While U.S. leaders seek solutions that would control those coming into the U.S., the migrants seek rest and compassion. For a closer look at the situation on the southern border, I'm joined by Elliot Spaggett, immigration reporter with the Associated Press. Elliot, thanks so much for joining the News Hour. What is the goal of the meeting between top Biden administration officials today and the Mexican president? Well, the U.S. officials haven't said any, made any public asks, but we can infer from what's been happening over the last few weeks, the numbers are astronomical. Uh, they, they're uh, unprecedented, to use a word of. Uh, CBP Acting Commissioner Troy Miller, above 10,000 arrests for illegal crossings on many days in December. So they want to get a handle on the numbers. And of course, this is not happening in a political vacuum. There's negotiations in Congress with aid to Ukraine hanging in the balance. So I think, uh, you know, the U.S. officials want to get a little better handle on, on the numbers. And, you know, to give one specific example, the uh, rail crossings in Eagle Pass, Texas, and in Eagle, uh, El Paso were closed for five days this, this month and caused a lot of economic losses. They reopened, but what was happening there was people were coming up on the trains through Mexico, and the U.S. wants Mexico to do more to stop that. So more enforcement is what I think the U.S. is looking for. You visited the Arizona side of the border with Mexico recently. What did you see for yourself about the situation and specifically about the efficacy of the border wall? Yeah, we, I was in Lukeville, Arizona, which is one of the one of the, the hot spots right now. Um, about three thousand people are crossing a day in that in that general area. Much of it through Lukeville, which is a border crossing that is closed right now because of all the uh, the, the need to focus resources on processing processing migrants. It's the border crossing, uh, a duty free shop, and a restaurant. Uh, and there's really very few agents around, but lots of people. I saw lots, probably more from Senegal than any other country, lots from Ghana, uh, Guinea, I'm sorry, uh, Mexico, of course, Guatemala. And they're, they're sawing through the walls, the smugglers are on the Mexican side. They're, they're using construction-grade tools. 
Uh, these are columns um, that were built during the, uh, the final days of the, the Trump administration. They cut through and swing the columns back and forth so people can just walk through, young people, toddlers, older people. It's very easy to get through. And they walk for hours looking for Border Patrol agents who are nowhere to be found. Uh, this, this could probably be stopped by Border Patrol agents, but they just don't have enough there. They're busy processing. Um, I did, uh, again, uh, Commissioner Miller said he, he wants Mexico to step more. These are step up more. There are uh, these, these breaches, and there were hundreds of them, uh, that yeah, they had been welded shut, but the, the dates were marked on when they had been fixed, and hundreds of them over a 30-mile stretch. And, and Commissioner Miller said, you know, we need Mexico to step up to do more to stop people from breaching these wall, uh, the wall on the Mexican side. You've been reporting on the underlying causes of increased migration from climate change to poverty, but you've also emphasized in your recent reporting the role of technology in smuggling operations. I wonder if you would talk a little bit more about what you found out about how that contributes to the increasing flow of migrants. Yeah, well, it, it vastly uh, increases global mobility. So we we did a story uh, on Mauritanians who are uh, very, very few were crossing. And then around February, March of this year, they were crossing by you know several thousand a month, most of them going to Cincinnati or New York. Uh, they fly, uh, four, about 4,000 Chinese are crossing uh, a month through, uh, San, mostly through San Diego. I, I mentioned the Senegalese, uh, people from Uzbekistan, Turkey, India, um, you know, thousands from these countries every month. And they, uh, it, you know, there needs to be a lot more reporting, I think, on this. But there are travel agencies that uh, many of them really are travel agencies and they help, you know, they arrange flights and uh, communicate virtually over social media. Every migrant has a, a, a smartphone. And so they use TikTok and, uh, and, and Facebook and YouTube and other apps to get instructions. And so the smugglers are oftentimes not even with them physically. They aren't when they cross the U.S. border. They're just given instructions, cross here, walk until you see a border patrol agent. So that is, that is a, you know, a sea change from just a few years ago. Uh, how would you describe have, how immigration politics have shifted in the last year? To the right, for sure. Uh, you know, one big development, of course, has been the large influx of migrants from, uh, from Venezuela and, and other countries to New York, Chicago, um, Denver, other Democrat-run cities. And so we're seeing now with the negotiations in Congress over this, uh, it includes aid to Israel and Ukraine, as well as border security measures, uh, is uh, a lot of Democrats saying, yeah, like, uh, you know, John Fetterman of Pennsylvania, even Dick Durbin, who, uh, you know, was the original champion of the Dreamer legislation, saying, uh, Chuck Schumer, we need to do something. Of course, the progressive wing of the Democratic Party is, is very much opposed uh, to, that, to those changes. They want they want to keep 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 the asylum system going, um, and now the Republicans are split too. So we'll see. But I think overall there seems to be a growing consensus that something needs to be done, and more more on the enforcement side. Elliot Spaggett with the Associated Press. Thanks so much for joining us with your insights. Thank you.